Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the Survival Medicine Handbooks, third edition. Also, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, the Layman's Guide, and the designer of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Unless you just got back from a trip to Mars, you probably know that there's an epidemic going on in China. It appears to be viral in nature. A virus is a tiny, much smaller than a bacteria, living particle, although it stretches the definition of life. It requires the cells of a host to actually activate itself and reproduce. Once it's hijacked the cell's machinery, it produces a lot of little viruses that go into the bloodstream, often bursting or killing the host cell in the process. The physical symptoms caused depend on the type of virus and the cells that are infected. First reported December 8th in Wuhan, a city of 11 million people in Hubei province, the new virus appears to belong to the coronavirus family. Coronaviridae is a family of viruses with little projections that might remind you of a crown or maybe even the corona of the sun. The genetic material is not DNA, but RNA or ribonucleic acid. RNA viruses generally have very high mutation rates compared to DNA viruses, at least. And that leaves the possibility of genetic mistakes being much more frequent. When I say mistakes, I mean an imperfect photocopy of the RNA genetic material as it reproduces. In most cases, maybe not much happens. In some cases, it might even hinder the virus, but just as, or more often, mutations improve the ability of the virus to succeed or reproduce in some way, such as maybe letting it multiply faster or making it harder to kill. Each person who becomes a host becomes a potential to be patient zero for the new improved virus. Several coronavirus strains have made the news this century. A couple of examples are SARS, Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome in Asia, and MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome in, well, the Middle East. SARS killed about 800 out of 8,000 victims with the disease process occurring over maybe eight months or so of outbreak. MERS, if untreated, infected thousands of people with about a 35 to 45 percent death rate. So far, the new coronavirus, named 2019 NCOV, novel coronavirus, has sickened more than 6,000 and killed 132, if you can believe the statistics of the Chinese government. That's a little more than a 2% death rate. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but the death rate from the Spanish flu 100 years ago was also a little more than 2%. You may have heard that the 2019 NCOV was first found in some of the live markets common in China. Some mutation may have appeared which allowed a bat, a common living source of coronavirus, to infect other animals and then humans. That's a big step, but it doesn't mean that same mutation will make it easy to pass from human to human. What is known, however, is that it can happen. That depends on the R0 number. The what? The R0 number, R with a zero where a comma would be. Well, R0 tells you the average number of people in an area that's previously free of infection that will catch a disease from one contagious victim. If the number is one or less, the virus will likely peter out easily. But Spanish flu, well, that infected three people for every contagious victim. So did Ebola and measles, a lot more contagious with numbers more than six. Actually, some people say 12 in even more. This virus in China, it's R0, is about 1.5 or so according to the statistics, if you can believe them. In most cases, people exhibit mild symptoms about one to 14 days after exposure, similar to a cold or mild flu. About one in five, however, get very sick, including pneumonia, breathing difficulty, and respiratory failure. There appears to be evidence that people can be contagious before they experience symptoms that's not unusual for a viral infection. Should you panic? No, right now the coronavirus epidemic is 99% in China and no community-wide outbreaks have occurred outside its borders. That's good news, at least for now, because no traveler from China to the US has proven to be patient zero in an outbreak here. 
When a community has an issue in most countries, nearby municipalities rush to help. That goes for wildfires as well as epidemics. The situation which would concern me the most is if many communities are hit and have to direct their resources to their own people and not be able to help others. We're a long way from that right now. Coming up on our next video, what I want you to do to keep your family safe if your community suffers an outbreak, plus supplies that will be useful for any pandemic disease. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. If you're concerned, by the way, about epidemic disease, please check out Nurse Amy's pandemic supplies and kits, just a part of her entire line at her store at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.